with Bob Greasy. Happy to have you with us. Both these clubs are five and three. And right now, you have to say that Miami is under the gun. And so is Dan Marino. Well, Marino has been struggling, but it's been because of his offensive line is not playing as well. They've had some injuries and also their wide receivers. But the main thing is the rest of the league is getting a book on him, Jay. They're not blitzing him as much. They know they can't sack him. They're just going to try to get a little pressure. And they're sitting deep in zone. So he has to be more patient and take the underneath stuff. The Patriots have been on the go. And the reason, Steve Grogan back at the controls. Just the opposite of Marino. He's been out for a while, and he says the, the time away has allowed him to, to realize that he has to be more patient. Not always go for the big plays, but just call the running plays and then get the plays downfield and keep the drives going. He's more patient. Marino needs to be. The Dolphins coming off a loss at Detroit. Don Shula, the man, he can motivate them, although he's not had a lot of success here. He says this is the crossroads of their season. He says we're doing all the things that losers do, and he has to motivate them today. And across from him, his former player, Raymond Berry, who's had great success against the AFC East in his short tenure. Raymond said that he has to, he told his players that they have to play a lot better today because he knows he's going to be out coached. The other thing is, the Patriots have their kind of day. It's cold, it's wet and windy. This is an ideal day for the Patriots. crowd of better than 61,000 coming into this stadium as they battle these mists here today and it's kind of a windy day although there won't be a great deal of wind down on the field apparently as we look at the flags on the goal post Miami is going to kick off the Dolphins lost at Detroit 31 to 21 last week New England defeated Tampa Bay 32 to 14 after being down 14 to nothing. Quad Reves will put the ball in play. The rookie out of Tennessee, out of Sunset High School, and back deep, Stefan Starring. Starring. Very talented return man in the middle, and we're underway. Starring coming up at the eight-yard line. Fumbles, picks it up, and falls down, and comes up with a football at the 15-yard line. Joe Carter for Miami was downfield to touch him down. Steve Grogan, number 14, starts the quarterback with Collins, James, Morgan, Fryer, and Dawson. Guy Morris is at center, playing there for the injured Pete Brock, Hannah and Fairchild, Holloway and Moore at the tackles. First down from the 15-yard line. per carry, hit by Hugh Green, number 55, and Jackie Ship, number 50. Betters Charles and Bo Camper up front for the Dolphins. Rudzinski, Ship, Brown, and the newcomer, Hugh Green of the linebackers. Langford with Justin, Glenn Backwood, and Bud Brown in the secondary. A pickup of seven yards on the play, second down and three. to the first down. Looks like he's about a yard short. Bud Brown, the free safety, number 43, making the stop. George Little got the start at nose tackle for the Dolphins with Bo Camper being out. Shula said he was going to try and spot play him a little bit today to try and get him through the whole ball game, but that leaves Mike Charles at the defensive end. A key matchup today will be the nose tackle, Little, against Guy Morris, number 75 for the Patriots. Double tight ends now as Ramsey has joined Lynn Dawson. We've got Mosey Tatupu in there replacing James. So Collins and Tatupu. This is Tatupu, and he's got the first down. Or was it Withers? It was. It was Robert Withers knocked out of bounds. First down, William Judson, 49, ran him out. With Grogan in there, they like to get the run going. They like to run this play right in here. But the other thing he likes to do is go to his wide receiver, Stanley Morgan, coming across the middle. Now, what he'll do is send Fryer deep down the middle to take care of the weak safety, which will be here. You'll see him run, and then at the right time, he'll throw this play-action pass, and he likes to get it to uh, Stanley Morgan. First down at the 29-yard line. New England, 14th on offense in the National Football League. Staying on the ground with James. James, 
pushes to the 35-yard line, a pickup of about five. Jackie Ship, number 50, there to make the tackle. The Patriots are 15th in rushing, averaging 3.8 per carry. They rank 5th in passing, or 15th in passing, averaging 52.8%. Brogan has not yet thrown the football. Second down and five. Fryer, James again, and a first down at the 41-yard line, a pickup of six, as again it was Jackie Ship, the inside linebacker, number one draft choice out of Oklahoma two years ago, number 50 made the stop. Good blocking on the right side of that line, 66 to the right of your screen is Fairchild, he and Moore, 67, double team betters, better goes over on his back, good four or five yards, good play for the Patriots. James already has 20 yards on four carries. The pitch comes to James. He's at the 45. We have a penalty marker down. The first flag of the afternoon. Stop made by Mike Charles, 71, and Mark Brown, 51. A pickup of seven if the play stands. The referee today is Freddie Wyatt right there, former West Virginia University quarterback. motion against Steve Moore number 67 Chuck Studley is going to be trying a lot of different things to stop the run here Hugh Green 55 plays off the block of Collins and gets knocked off his feet that is one thing he needs his linebackers to do there keep their feet they're looking for some leadership from Hugh Green that time the Patriots and Collins got the best of them Dolphins ranking 24th on defense in the NFL first and 15 out to the 44-yard line. Tony Collins, who's averaging 3.7 per carry, picked up nine. Paul Langford, number 44, on the tackle, the corner man. Steve Grogan, since he's been back in the lineup, Jay, for the Patriots, has been calling all of his own plays. Before that, Raymond Berry was calling him, and he really got a lot of criticism from the fans and from some of the players about being too conservative. With Grogan, that's not the case. than you normally see this play. Everything was covered. The, uh, the Dolphins were deep in their zone coverage, and he just threw it away, and uh, that was the first pass that Grogan has attempted today. Green Bay has a field goal to take an early lead over the Chicago Bears. Third down and seven, and the Dolphins in a prevent defense. Grogan out of the shotgun. Incomplete. He was trying to get it to Irving Fryer by the linebacker out there, Alex Moyer, and punting time for Rich Camarillo and the New England Patriots. Camarillo's averaging 44.4. Bob, we have four of the best kicking people in the game here today. Camarillo and Franklin for the Patriots, and of course, Reves and Roby for Don Shula's Dolphins. the 19 over the 20 and down he goes at the 21 yard line coming downfield to make the tackle was ed reynolds number 95 and we'll be back with more tomorrow
dominated the series, but they've had a tough time here at Foxborough. A 36-yard punt, a two-yard return a moment ago. And Miami setting up shop for the first time offensively. That series uh, between the two teams, Jay, really uh, doesn't tell you how it's been the last nine years. The Dolphins have only won two times in the last nine trips to Foxborough. It's been a very tough place for the Dolphins to play. Dan Marino at quarterback. 59.8% completion rate. He brings them out. High formation from the 21-yard line. Play action. And the pass is complete to the near sideline to Clayton. Ronnie Lippett, number 42, had the coverage a six-yard gain. Marino with Nathan Bennett, Harris, Clayton and Hardy, and at the moment they have Jensen in there as a wide receiver. Green, Foster, Stevenson, Taves, and Lee. And that's the key, Jay, the different offensive line. Ronnie Lee starting at right tackle. Cleveland Green moves over to left. Be interesting to see how those two tackles hold up today. Johnson, 87, now at tight end. Lorenzo Hampton, 27, is in the backfield. Jensen comes in motion. They give it to Hampton. And Hampton cracks near a first down as he got it over the 30-yard line. Wrapped up by the linebacker, Steve Nelson, number 57. Sims with Owens and Adams up front for the Patriots. Sims is really playing a lot better this year. Good linebacking here. Tip it outstanding with Nelson, McGrew, and Blackman. In the secondary, Lippitt, the talented Raymond Claiborne, Roland James and Fred Marion. Third down and one coming for Miami. First quarter, no score. Foxborough, Massachusetts. Davenport is in that backfield now, and the handoff goes to Davenport. And it looks like he's got the first down. Nelson was the man that wrapped him up, number 57, along with Kenneth Sims, 77, and Dennis Owens, 98. Talk about Andre Tippett, number 56, out of Iowa. He's a dandy. Two of the finest linebackers in the game. 56 Tippett for the Patriots playing off the block, and also Hugh Green for the Dolphins. Jay will be following the progress of these two linebackers throughout the day. Luckhurst, the 28-yard field goal. Schubert, a 24-yard field goal to give the Giants an early lead. protection for Marino first down it's it's very very good Marino throws the ball good coverage by Lippitt stride for stride but the ball is so well thrown and Clayton has such a knack for getting open at the right time when the ball gets there that is the first long pass that Marino and Clayton have teamed up for in quite some time Jensen is in there as a wide receiver both tight ends Hardy 84 and Johnson 87 are there Hand off to Hampton. Hampton still on his feet inside the 20-yard line. The strong safety, Roland James, number 38, to make the play. Pick up of about 9 or 10. Excellent effort here by Hampton. It's going to be key to watch the number 60, Hayes, pulling and trapping on the uh, linebacker, Blackman. Hampton goes inside and then just runs through Julius Adams, 85's block. Good, tough running by the Dolphins, but it's going to be key today, Jay, for that offensive line to see how they can handle this defense for the Patriots. First down for Miami. Jensen again in motion. The pitch back to Davenport. Davenport is down to the seven-yard line. Davenport cut down by Fred Marion, the free safety number 31. A pickup of 11. Jensen went in motion, and he did some good blocking here. Well, he's in there for some reason. It's because he's blocking right here. You see him blocking on Blackman, 55. Now, Jensen started the ball game, Jay, and when I saw that in there, I knew he was going to be in there trying to block on somebody because he's a big, strong guy, even though he's a former quarterback. His block was key to springing Davenport for that good run. Jensen is out. Duriel Harris, 82, is in there. First and goal to go from about the seven-yard line. A quick toss and incomplete. Now here's the flag. The flag is thrown. Ronnie Lippitt was there against Mark Clayton. That 
time, Marino just took it and tried for the toss on the flag pattern. You see the end of the play here. Really can't tell from that angle whether who uh, one player or the other uh, impeded the progress of the uh, of the other to try and catch the football. Fred Wyant, the referee, has indicated it will go against the Patriots. He's still discussing things with his crew. Dave Moss, Jerry Bergman, Joe Haynes, Dick Hantak, Bill Quinby, and Chuck McCollum here working with him. Illegal Chuck, number 42, first down. Call against Ronnie Lippett, an illegal Chuck and a first down at the four. So it wasn't pass interference, it was illegal Chuck five yards downfield from the line of scrimmage that was called on Lippett. Dolphins have been passing more this season. In 84, on their way to the Super Bowl, they passed or attempted 55% of their plays. First half of this year, they've been up around 61%. Hardy going in motion, now sets to the left side on the wing. And off goes to Davenport. Touchdown, Miami! Four-yard touchdown for Davenport, his fifth touchdown of the season out of Louisville. Young man born in Bermuda. Watch the block right here of Jeff Taze as he comes around and gets a block on Rembert, number 52, as Marino will hand off to Davenport. Gets through there as a nice hole. He, he actually misses the block, but there was enough uh, of a hole there that Davenport could get up and score the touchdown. The rookie, Fouad Reves, out of Tennessee, will attempt the point. On Strock will hold. It's up and it's good. A very impressive drive by the Miami Dolphins. They lead seven to nothing. We're not a company, but we'll give you a chance to work with us. It's Reves kicking off. Stephen starring at the 20, the 25, steps through at the 30, out to the 33-yard line. Robert Sowell, number 45, making the stop for the specialty unit. Watch the block of Tony Nathan on the touchdown as he blocks to the outside. The offensive line, Foster 61, who was at tight end. Cleveland Green, 74, playing on the left side. As we look at it from the defense and from behind the defense, as Rembert gives a little alley-o to uh, Taves, but uh, good play by Davenport getting into the end zone. The Dolphins made six first downs on seven plays. Hand off to Craig James. James likes to get that football. He wants the football, and in recent weeks, he has gotten it more often. He stopped by Doug Betters, number 75, after a gain up to the 37-yard line. One of the keys today, Jay, will be the offensive line play, and especially the center, Guy Moore, 75, and Hannah, 73. You saw his left arm out, maybe, on 99 Little, double-teaming Little, and if you can control the head, the nose tackle, you can usually run up the middle. to put it up. He swings it out to James. James has a first down. Bumped out of bounds near the 45-yard line by Mark Brown, number 51. James had caught 10 passes for 190 yards coming into today's game. A pickup of eight. It's a little screen pass. Grogan looks downfield as you see the lineman at the top of your screen going out. Pick up some blocks. Brzezinski, 59, is knocked off his feet by Fairchild. And then James gets what he can, but it's a good safe pass for Grogan to get something going. and Mike Charles 71. Green's play has been improving every week. Washington Atlanta now 3-3 as Mosley's kicked the 39-yard field goal. Buffalo's on top seven to nothing. Greg Bell scoring from 14 yards out. Field goal has tied up that Tampa Bay Giants game at three all. Second down and seven over the middle complete. 
to the 47-yard line goes Tony Collins. Collins came into today's game with 32 catches. Pickup of about four as Mark Brown, 51, and Jackie Ship, 50, came through to make the tackle. Earlier in the season, uh, Jay, uh, Raymond Berry was uh, fooling around, messing around with his running backs, putting Mosey to Tupu and then Weathers into the lineup. He finally wanted James and Collins in there together, and Collins has been blocking very well for James, who has ran very well the last two weeks. but it was very soft and uh, a mistake for Stanley Morgan. You saw Raymond Berry, the ex-wide receiver, pat him on the back, so that's going to happen a few times. This has happened to, to uh, Morgan a few times this year, Jay. Seems like uh, the start of uh, a ball game, he'll drop one, but he always comes back and, and makes everybody forget about it because he makes some big plays. Second punt of the day for Rich Camarillo. Tommy Vigorito downfield. Camarillo angles to the far sideline. He's been doing a good job. It is picked up by Vigorito, though, and out he comes to the 31-yard line. Mosi Tatupu was there to pick him up. 34-yard punt, 17-yard return. We'll be back with more in a moment. Jeep Cherokee has some advantages you ought to look into, like superior cargo room and room for five with a choice of two or four doors. Go back and take a look at Tommy Vigorito on that last punt return. He was looking forward. It looked like he wanted Lyle Blackwood, 42, at the bottom of your screen to catch it, but it was the longest punt return this year for the Dolphins. And great to see Vigorito battle back. Davenport, who's having a fine first half, is near a first down at the 41-yard line. Came up just about a foot short, it looked like. Roland James, 38, and Raymond Claiborne, 26, ran him out over there, and he is just short of the marker. Jeff, I, I mean, uh, Jay, I'm impressed with Jeff Taves. Uh, the offensive line of the Dolphins has been uh, reshuffled this year because of injuries, and really for this ball game, Jeff Taves stepping in a couple weeks ago, playing very well early on in the ball game. Duriel Harris, 82 now, and there has replaced Jensen. Lorenzo Hampton backfield second and one Marino steps up and throws penalty marker down passes complete to the 45 yard line of the Patriots to Mark Clayton the tackle made by Lippitt a pickup of 15 if it stands we might have a holding call that's it but it's going to be against the Patriots holding against New England on the play Ball going against Andre Tippett, number 56. It'll be refused. They'll take the play and set up shop at the Patriot 45-yard line. 447 left to play in the first quarter. Cleveland gets out in front of Pittsburgh as Matt Barr kicked the 34-yard field goal. That's another series similar to this one where Cleveland has not beat, not ever beaten uh, Pittsburgh in Three River Stadium. Jensen back in the Miami lineup and he comes in motion. A little delay to Davenport and nothing there. It was Sim 77 and Tippett 56. Spelling that one out in fine fashion and look at Sims. He's fired up. He's trying to get him going on defense. Well, Andre Tippett and right here, Andre Tippett and Ronnie Lee, Ken Sims on number 77 inside, and uh, Ronnie Lee trying to block on Sims, not getting it done. Sims and Tippett both coming out of the draft last year, three years ago. Sims the number one draft choice, Tippett the number two. They're both playing very well on the, on the left side for the Patriots. A loss of one on the play, second down. good example, Jay, right there, why Marino does not get sacked very many times, only five all year, is because if he sees somebody coming free, he's not afraid to go ahead and throw the ball away. Marino 
Marino now three out of four. 60 yards passing. Third down and 11. And Marino may have a free play. Well, he's knocked down. He couldn't get the pass away. Encroachment number 85. Julius Adams, the oldest defensive lineman in the National Football League. You see that the right of your uh, side of your screen, it's it's pretty difficult to pull a defensive lineman off sides when the quarterback is away from the center in a shotgun position. I don't know what Julius' problem was, but it's five yards for the Dolphins. And it's third down and six. to the far sideline, and it is incomplete. Muriel Harris, the intended receiver, Raymond Claiborne, had the coverage. Claiborne is complaining that there was offensive pass interference, the top of your screen, Durio Harris and Raymond Claiborne, good coverage. Now, Marino throws the ball, and it's just going to be a jump ball. There was a little shove there, maybe. Yeah, I didn't see anything that could be called uh, interference either way on that one, Jay. Reggie Roby, out of Iowa. He's averaging 45.6. Irving Fryer downfield, and the ball out of bounds on the far sideline. Deep in Patriot territory. Good job by Reggie Roby. 323 left to play in the first quarter. Expanded your TV picture by adding four new corners. It's Between the answers, that's some story. Join us next Saturday. 28-yard punt by Roby. And the Patriots starting from their own 13-yard line. Greg James getting it out just over the 15. Stop made by Brzezinski, 59. Steve Grogan is one of only two quarterbacks now in the National Football League who call their own plays. As we mentioned a little earlier, he now calls them. Raymond Berry says he's calling them the way I wanted to call them, only better. And Chuck Studley, the defensive coordinator for the Dolphins, is calling the defensive signals to try and stop what Grogan likes to call. The other man is Malone at Pittsburgh, but he's not playing today. Number 71, Hugh Green, 55. Update time, NFL 85. Jay Buffalo grabs a 7-0 lead at home against Cincinnati on this 14-yard scoring run by Greg Bell. Of course, the Bills led the Eagles 17-0 a week ago in the fourth quarter and somehow found a way to lose it. Let's go back to Jay Randolph. Bob Costas, and we look forward to your updates all afternoon. Loss of one on that last play. Third down and eight. Grogan under pressure. Throws. It's complete. I don't know if they got the first down. He got it to the tight end, Derek Ramsey, number 88. And Hugh Green was right there to make the tackle. And it is the first down. Now that's a big play for the Patriots. A pickup of eight yards. Ramsey in 85. 16 catches for 151 yards. That was number 17. Ramsey came here in a trade with the Raiders in 83 that involved Dan Hesselbeck. He's out of Kentucky. Oh, it is first down at the 23-yard line. A minute and 26 to go. First quarter. Miami leads 7-0. James throws to the outside. Across the 30. Wrapped up by Lankford, number 44. He got about nine on the play. Defensively, Jay, what Chuck Studley wants to do is stop the running game first and force Grogan into must-pass situations. He feels as though if he can pass when he wants to on first or second down, second and short yardage, and run when he wants to, if he's got them both going, he's going to be a much tougher quarterback than if he can take one of them away from him. Patriots ranking 15th in rushing. Miami 20th in rushing. Both these clubs have run the ball rather well here in the first period of play. Craig James. Craig James. 
Wins. He got the first down as he's near the 35-yard line before he was shoved back by big Doug Betters, number 75. Betters out of Nevada, Reno, the defensive lineman of the year in 1984, so voted by the media in Southern Florida. And a very strong performer. Betters has been playing well, Jay. The man they really miss in the middle of that defense is Bob Baumar, the all-pro, the pro bowler from the last few years. And like we've been saying, good run defense starts at the nose tackle. If he can handle the center, then you can usually stop the run. And we come to the end of the first quarter here in Foxborough, Massachusetts. The Dolphins seven, the Patriots nothing. Yes, the telltale sign of high quality always coming good. Bob Greasy with you. We talked at the top of the show about the play of the offensive lines and these clubs trying to get the ball going along the ground. We've seen it here in the first quarter. I've been impressed the way the Dolphins have run the ball so far, and the Patriots, of course, are running it, and Studley, the defensive coordinator, is going to try and stop it. That's the first thing he's going to try to do. But with the Dolphins' makeshift offensive line changing Cleveland Green to the left side from the right, I've been very impressed the way their coordination has been on the run. Patriots with a first down. And Grogan over the middle. It's complete to Tony Collins. And Collins is up at the 43-yard line. Hugh Green, 55. Mark Brown, 51 on the tackle. Pickup of eight. Take a look at these statistics over the first period of play. Patriots controlled the time of possession in fine fashion, but they're down 7-0. Second down and two. Greg James. James has the first down. Pick up of seven as he got near midfield. Look at some of this crowd, and let's go to the telestrator, Robert. Watch Morris right here. He'll get out and cut off, seal off number 50, Jackie Ship, from getting over and getting into the pursuit. 75, Morris, right there. Now, he's got him right where he wants him. He can't get over, and you see this big lane over there, if you can stop it right here. Right here is a big lane that Ship needs to be over there filling. Come back live, number 30, Mosey Tatupu. Now in the back. a very tough call to go against the Patriots. Grogan hitting him in the middle, hitting him in the middle with the running game, picking the right time to go upstairs. He didn't get a call on who that was on. Nope. It's an illegal procedure, illegal motion. Uh, one of the, probably one of the receivers or one of the uh, backs moved a little bit ahead of time. So it nullifies the big play, and it is first and 15 from the 45. Rogan's got some time now. Going to scramble out of there and is out of bounds at the 40-yard line. As Mike Charles came over to make the play, number 71. Pretty good coverage that time. Good coverage downfield, and Mike Charles hustling over. I can remember a time not too many years ago, Jay, when Grogan would have taken off and gained a lot of yards. He says, I don't, I don't run anymore. I just scramble around. He's only run 10 times this year for a total of 11 yards, and, and I don't think that is going to be a big concern for Chuck Studley's defense. Miami getting into a prevent defense now as the Patriots have just had their first sack. Second down, 20, from the 40-yard line. Tony Collins, over.
over the 45 out to midfield, and he gets a nice chunk back. Picked up 10, Bud Brown, number 43. On the stop, you know, talk about Hugh Green, the former All-American at Pittsburgh, who made the move from Tampa Bay, number 55, and we talked about his improving play each week since he's joined the Dolphins. And this is one of the things they want to do, getting more involved in the pass rush, moving him all around. Week after week, they're giving him more responsibility on defense, and he's able to come up and make some plays. But this is what the Dolphin defense needs, is somebody to come in and make some big plays and really get this defense fired up. Cedric Jones, 83, is in there now, joining Morgan and Fryer as wide receivers from the shotgun on third and ten. Rogan, under pressure, gets it away. Intercepted. Intercepted on the far sideline by William Judson, number 49, the right corner. It's his 13th career interception, his second of this season. Earlier, he brought one back for a touchdown, 61 yards. A turnover, and the Dolphins will have it and operate from their own 41-yard line. Looking straight downfield, does not see Judson coming back in. Judson jammed the receiver. Normally, Judson will go on downfield with him. This time, he didn't look to the outside, did not see Judson coming back in, and that was an interception that Grogan never thought would occur. Well, he had the three wide receivers in there, ended up throwing to the tight end, Derek Ramsey. Woody Bennett and Lorenzo Hampton are now in the backfield. That's Bennett coming in motion to give to Hampton. Hampton out to the 42-yard line. There's Judson along the sideline. Now in his fourth season, number eight draft choice back in 81. He's been the top defensive back, I think, the last two years for the Dolphins. I mean, if you wanted to grade him out, I think that's the way it would show up. Well, he has really come into his own the last couple of years with the injuries to Don McNeil on the other side. He has really emerged as their top corner, uh, and he's playing very well. Twelve minutes left to play in the first half. Nathan and Hampton are now in the backfield. Marino over the middle. It's complete at the 45. The tight end, Dan Johnson, number 87, has the first down. Roland James, 38, and Marion, 31. The safeties converge to make the tackle. Marino limping after a 16-yard gainer to, Don, to Dan Johnson. 87, Dan Johnson gets inside of Tippett. That means it's a zone coverage when nobody covers him. Gets behind the linebackers. Let's take a look at Marino and see. Yeah, he gets rolled. Well, he got rolled into there by maybe Blackman at the bottom of the screen, but uh, maybe they've got kicked in the shin or something. Miami leads 7 to nothing. First down at the Patriot 42-yard line. Jensen goes in motion. The give is to Hampton. And Hampton can't get much this time. Barely back to the line of scrimmage. Roland James, the former Tennessee All-American, number 38. The strong safety led the way. A win today would be the first time in Patriot history that they had won their first four games against the AFC East. They've beaten the Bills twice and the Jets. Let's remind you of this telecast presented by authority of the NFL intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Patriots and the NFL is prohibited. With Bob Greasy, Jay Randolph here at Foxborough. Marino. Again, it's the tight end that makes the catch. Bruce Hardy this time. And Roland James, number 38, on the tackle at the 40-yard line. They didn't get much there. Pickup of about three as Marino had to release quickly to the tight end. Marino came into today's game with 180 completions out of 301 tries. Number one draft choice in 83. Walked out of camp. Most troubled season training camp in the history of Don Shula and his Dolphins. Third down and eight. And intended for Mark Clayton. Clayton was in a battle over there with Rod 
Dominic Swain, the extra defensive back, and never was able to break out in a position to make any kind of a catch as they talk it over as they come off. Well, it was good tight coverage, man-to-man -man coverage, but the key was the offense did not give him much time to throw. Marino did not get sacked. If he would have waited any longer, he would have, but he threw through the ball uh, when the time was up and then obviously had to throw it before he wanted to. Reggie Roby's first punt was a 28-yarder, but he put it inside the 20. Irving Fryer, who, of course, caught what he thought was a touchdown pass a little while ago, is back. Penalty marker down. Ball goes into the end zone. We've got flags all over the place. You got an offsides on New England, and that will move the ball five yards closer, and uh, maybe uh, Don Shula will opt to uh, try a field goal. Side is the indication. Referee Fred Wyatt. We have 9.41 left to play in the first half, and the Dolphins are leading 7 to nothing as Davenport scored in the first quarter from four yards out. Ray Berry, 53 years old, born in Corpus Christi, Texas. Resumed his 24 years playing and coaching career here last year. Offside, decline, first foot down. Call went against Don Blackman, the linebacker. Now, said decline, didn't he? Yeah, I don't. Dwight right. Stevenson is going over there. I don't think uh, he wants to decline it. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Stevenson, the offensive captain, hurrying over there and straightening him out. They want to accept the penalty. Stevenson, the brilliant center of the Dolphins. I guess Bear Bryant put it best. He said he's the best that ever played for me. It's quite an endorsement, isn't it? At the 35-yard line now, it is fourth down and a long two. The Dolphins are going to go for it, Jay. They're on the 35-yard line. I guess it must be out of Claude Reves' range, and uh, if they make it, that'll be a big penalty. Marino steps in behind his center. A throw over the middle, and it is a first down at the 30-yard line to Joe Rose, the veteran tight end from California. Steve Nelson, 57 on the tackle. Joe Rose, right there, jam at the line of scrimmage. Now, the key is he gets inside. Nelson, 57, is supposed to have the inside coverage on him. He does, but it's just enough to make three or four yards and the first down. Marino gets rid of the ball as he's drifting back and away. You know, Jay, one of the reasons they may have not have tried that field goal is because Reves has had a hamstring problem all week. Yeah, he's had a little trouble, and it might have been a little too far for him to try it. Pass, the pass. And out to Clayton. Clayton gets away. Penalty marker down. And Clayton is down for a loss back at the 37-yard line. Julius Adams, 85, and Roland James, 38. Brought him down. The thing that hurt was the way that pass was thrown. It was low. He had to go down and get it. Didn't have any chance to go to the far side. Holding against Miami. 8.46 to play in the first half. The Dolphins are leading 7 to nothing. Holding number 57. Declined. Second down. Stevenson, the center, caught for the infraction. And Washington out to a 17-3 advantage as Theismann has just scored from 11 yards out over Atlanta. Tampa Bay now leads the Giants 10-3. DeBerg to Jimmy Giles for a touchdown. Norwood's 43-yard field goal puts Buffalo up 10-0. That's Davenport. Davenport stopped at the 35-yard line. Davenport started today with a 4.3 average, and we've got a little tussle. Tip it in there. Lester Williams, number 72. Take a look at the end of this play and see where it all started, Bob. 72 is Lester Williams. Now, Dwight Stevenson must have... Uh, Dwight went after him for some reason or other, and Lester must have done something a little bit earlier. 
folks in the Miami area, of course, familiar with Lester, who played at Miami. Number one draft choice in 82. Third down and 15. Pass is complete, but there's a penalty marker down. Pass went to the 16-yard line to Mark Clayton. Raymond Claiborne, 26, on the tackle, 20 yards if it stands. Let's see. Holding against the Patriots. And the play will go. What you're seeing, Jay, is the Patriots' defense is playing aggressive man-to-man -man coverage on third down in their nickel situations. And in covering them, they're holding them uh, coming off the line of scrimmage. Holding number 42, decline. First down. Call goes against Ronnie Lippett. Watch the top of your screen. That's Joe Rose and Ronnie Lippett, 42. He must have felt he was holding him, but I don't know, Jay. It looked to me like he had his hands on him, jamming him, but whether or not he was actually holding him is hard to see. Jim Jensen back into the game, number 11 for Miami. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. throws an out pattern complete that's bruce hardy the big tight end and hardy run out of bounds by blackman the linebacker 55 boy did he, he got, take, take a shot he did. Blackman. excuse me he Jake. got to the 12 yard line talking about defenses in this game the patriots rank fifth sixth against the rush seventh against the pass the dolphins are 24th in defense in the nfl 24th against the rush and 22nd against the pass here is second down davenport davenport gets to the eight yard line before he's upended by ronnie lippett number 42 pick up a four on the play seven minutes left to play first half Miami leading seven to nothing and knocking on the door once more. There's Ford Reves wa warming up on the sideline, and Jay, you're giving the statistics offensively and defensively. One of the more interesting ones, I think, well, coming up to a third down situation. Miami is number one in the entire league in converting third down conversions, and of course the Patriots are number one defensively in stopping. It. So a great matchup right here. And the Dolphins are two for five on third. intended at the three-yard line for Tommy Vigorito, number 32. Pass a little bit underthrown. Don Blackman, the linebacker on the right side, isolated out there with him. Blackman had a great game last week against the Patriots. He had a safety, an interception, and a sack to go along with five tackles. And that, after being out two weeks uh, with an injury. So uh, Blackman playing very well for the uh, New England Patriots. Reves will attempt this field goal from the 16, a 26-yarder with Don Strock to hold. It's on the way, and it is good. 6.27 left to go in the first half. The Dolphins have increased their lead. They're up over New England 10 to nothing. Watching is believing. Look into the mirror and watch Ford Escort swept away by the benefits of Renault. Bob Greasy, Jay Randolph here at Foxborough as Baud Reves is set to kick off with Miami up 10 to nothing here. Stefan Starring is the deep man for the New England Patriots. Starring has been averaging 23.3 per kick return. the 13 at the 20 25 and to the 30 yard line today's game is brought to you by Renault European technology built in America make Renault the one to watch by the astonishingly simple new Sony Handycam all the excitement of video movies now in the palm of your hand and by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. First down and over the middle. The pass is intercepted. 
intercept it. Coming away with it is Mark Brown, number 51, the right inside linebacker. A real find for the Dolphins out of Purdue. Pass was intended for James. It bounced off his hands. The interception at the 41, return of six yards. Good protection and a nice lane for him to see. He just deflected off of the hands of the receiver. That was James, 32, and right into the hands of Brown. That's uh, Jay. When, you, when the weather is a little bit cool and your hands might get a little bit, the, the ball gets a little bit harder, too, and that's a tough ball to, to catch when it's up that high. Dolphins had seven interceptions coming into today's game. They now have nine. And a big opportunity for Miami to increase their lead. Marino has time. back there to help bat it away. This is an interesting battle between Clayton and Claiborne. They've been exchanging uh, insults, uh, quotes in the paper all week about uh, uh, he can't cover me, I can beat him. Well, Claiborne gets the best of this. The ball is a little bit underthrown, but he had the back of the end zone to help him. But uh, good play by uh, Claiborne. Cleveland leading Pittsburgh six to nothing there in the second quarter. Minnesota has the lead over Detroit now. Here it's 10 0 Miami. The give going to Hampton. Hampton's to the 32 yard line, wrapped up there by Garen Barris after a pickup of four. Barris, number 60, had help from Blackman, 55. I mentioned Raymond Claiborne a minute ago. His 114 consecutive start today. Four running backs averaging no less than four yards per carry for the Dolphins. And that's an interesting uh, stat there too, Jay, because a lot of people say Miami can't run the football. Well, they when they have run it, they have run it well. But when you've got a Marino and you're so successful throwing the football, it's kind of uh, uh, you kind of want to throw it more and you want to run it. Third down and seven at the 32-yard line. Marino on the run. silent one, the former Lombardi Trophy winner from Texas, who has been playing extremely well over recent weeks. He sure has, and you saw him trying to say a few things to Marino, and Marino says, I don't want to have any part of that. He went on... Uh, I didn't on know back. Sims was talking to anybody <laughs> these days. He's not talking to the press. I guess he <laughs> talked to the players, but uh, that, uh, when Marino was outside the pocket and he didn't find anything downfield, you knew there was good coverage uh, in the second oh, for the Patriots. That's the sack on Marino. Here's Reggie Roby angling to the far sideline. Penalty. No. Just a, oh, let's see. It goes into the end zone. I thought for a moment a penalty marker had been thrown, but it was a hat by one of the officials to try and mark it, but that ball bounded back. So L was down there, number 45 for Miami. 38-yard punt. Look at it here. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line. More in a moment. We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that it... Dolphins just missing a golden opportunity after the turnover. Uh, I like this weather up here. <laughs> I love this weather. <laughs> I like to take some of this back to Miami with me. Isn't it true that you once wore pantyhose up here on a cold <laughs> afternoon? I gotta admit to that. <laughs> First down for the Patriots. And the handoff going to Craig James. James is out to the 26-yard line, and Hugh Green, 55. Mike Charles, 71, stalled him at that point. As we take a look at this score, the four times the Patriots have had the ball, their first two times they punted, the last two were intercepted, and the Dolphins defensively were last in the league in takeaways, so they have to be happy, the Dolphins anyway, about those two turnovers. George Rogers just scored a touchdown in that Washington onslaught of Atlanta. Second down and three. to Craig James, cuts it back, and is 
short of the first down as Jackie Ship, the inside linebacker, number 50, number one draft choice out of Oklahoma, played it very well. James, as I mentioned, really likes the football. One of the things we may look for later on is him to throw a pass because he has thrown two, completed two, both for touchdowns this season. Been bad no matter who's keeping the stats. <laughs> That's right. We have 3.55 left to play. First half. Third down and one. Withers and Tatupo are in the backfield. That's Tatupo, and he's got the first down. That's Mark Brown, 51 on the tackle. A pickup of about seven. Take a look at the left side of that line against 55 Green and Blackwood. Good blocking up front. Weathers and Tutupu come in on short yardage situations. Raymond Berry gets those two big backs. Good blocking, tough runners in on short yardage. Fryer and Morgan are both set to the right side at the bottom of the screen. Over the middle, incomplete for Tony Collins. And the pass a little high. That one went through Collins' hands just the way the one again with James did a few moments ago that was intercepted. It is misting here. Brogan having a tough start here today on a very cool, misty afternoon. Stats aren't that good, but Drogan has always been a quarterback that didn't care about his stats. He'll throw some big plays, try long passes, and uh, whether he's completing a high percentage or not, he can still come back and make the big play. One of the things they say about him these days is he has a better touch than he used to have. Now in his 11th season, on second down, he's got a man, and it is tapped away at the last minute by number 47, Glenn Blackwood. Blackwood making a fine play in front of the tight end Lynn Dawson Blackwood very intelligent performer out of Texas uh, he held out of course during preseason drills he was one of the holdouts Glenn uh, uh, Bob Brzezinski also held out that was I think part of their problem Jay they never had the entire defensive unit together they've had injuries with Bomar Charles Bowser and McNeil has been hurt and then the new additions uh, Jackie Ship playing this year for the first time and Hugh Green all transition and all those new personnel has to have an effect on your continuity on defense. Miami in the prevent defense and Brogan leads them out of the shotgun. Brogan throwing, got his man, first down. The pass is complete to Irving Fryer, 18 yards on the play. Paul Lankford, 44, made the tackle. Here's Fryer right here, and Langford is covering him. He's just going to go straight down and break to the outside, and the outside receiver will just clear it out. You'll see nobody else is in the area because it's man-to-man -man coverage. Nobody else around. Pushes off a little bit, breaks to the outside, and the ball is right on target. Fryer's second catch of the day. The first one didn't count as it was called back. 18 yards for him. 2.50 to play in the first half. James had moved out of the backfield, obviously not the primary receiver, and the pass under thrown for James. Clock stop with 2.49 left to go in this first half. As you look at Raymond Berry, he's the ninth head coach of the Patriots, a Hall of Famer, a tireless worker, and a technician, both as a player and as a coach. to him out of that I formation and doing an excellent job was Kim Camper number 58 a loss of about a yard on the play Hugh Green wears a protection in front on his mask it's a plastic uh, uh, impact resistance uh, shatterproof type of a shield so that uh, he had a problem with an, an eye a few games back and he has worn that to protect that uh, the eyes needs a windshield wiper down there today <laughs> today he does Warren Moon to Drew Hill and Houston leads Kansas City 10 nothing here third down and 11 for the Patriots Break 
to the inside, and this receiver will clear the safety out of the way for him. As you'll see, comes to the inside. A good throw by Grogan. The Patriots are on the move. We'll be right back. What just popped up? The new Sony Handycam. This afternoon, the second half of our doubleheader. Most of you see that Western shootout. Marcus Allen and the Raiders, they battle the Seahawks. Rogan now is 6 out of 14 for 70 yards. First and 10 at the 24-yard line. Tony Collins. Collins gets to the 21-yard line. Pickup of three. Doug Betters, number 75 on the tackle. We're isolated again on Hugh Green, big number 55. Blocking on uh, on Green is James, 32, as he throws James out of the way, but the block was sufficient enough to allow the, receiver, the runner to get through the hole. Hugh Green is, is going to be an impact player on that defense, Jay. There's no question. As soon as he learns the entire defense, he's going to be as devastating there as he was at uh, Tampa. Second down and about six, a minute and 23 to go in this first half. Brogan using play action, lots of time, throws over the middle, incomplete. He was trying to go to Irving Fryer again. Fryer cutting back over the middle, but Brown, the free safety, 43, had the coverage. Clock stop with a minute and 15 to go. Both clubs have three timeouts remaining. Here's Bud Brown right here. He's just going to drop straight back, and the receiver is going to come down and break to the inside. Grogan is hoping that the play action will fool Bud Brown. Brown blocks, blocks back straight up and then sees it coming all the way and then goes for the interception. Just doesn't come up with the football. Irving Fryer, Stephen Starring, and Stanley Morgan are all in the lineup now as the Patriots are spread out all over the field. New England, four out of seven on third down conversions, third and seven. Rogan throwing and overthrowing Stanley Morgan. Looked like Morgan might have had a step on the play. Grogan overthrowing. Judson and Brown had the coverage. Tony Franklin, the seven-year man from Texas A&M. Tony Eason, who has been injured, of course, but can do the holding, will do the holding. Franklin had a 50-yarder last Sunday against the win. He is 11 of 14 in the field goal kicking department. 33 of 42 field goals as a Patriot. This is a 38-yarder. It on the way, plenty of foot, it's good. Well, he continues to prove he's one of the very best in the business. 107 to play. Watching is believing. Watch Toyota Corolla reshaped by the benefits of Renault. Watch Renault Alliance's larger truck. Art Langer, Al Sutton, Lanny Watkins, Hale Irwin, they'll all be competing. That'll be a great event. Kapalua on Maui is now the middleman for Miami and he is coming up to take it at the 10 at the 15 the 20 trying to get outside and does and stops the clock as he stepped out of bounds at the 26 yard line we've got one minute and one second remaining to be played in this first half give you a look at all of these scores very quickly Cleveland over Pittsburgh Washington really doing it to Atlanta Green Bay leads Chicago Minnesota has the lead over Detroit Tampa Bay leading the Giants Buffalo there's that Houston score now six to nothing over Kansas City and six three Minnesota over Detroit Tampa Bay over the Giants and of course coming up at halftime Costas, Ahmad Rashad, and Pete Axtell, NFL 85. The handoff goes to Lorenzo Hampton. Pick up a four on the play as he is stalled by Lester Williams, number 72. These Patriot linebackers have been playing very, very well. Their defense is now ranked fifth against the rush. Last week they were ninth. The timeout is called. 52 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. More action from Foxborough in a moment. Dolphins, Bob, on their last seven first plays from 
of scrimmage first down plays. They now have zero yards on those seven first down opportunities. They're having trouble running the ball on first down. That's not surprising, again, with that mix max of offensive linemen, right tackle moving to the left, a new man in there. It's very tough to run with new people at different positions in the offensive line. Hardy and Johnson, both tight ends are in there now for Marino on second down. Throws it out to the far sideline, and out of bounds is Duriel Harris. Picked up six. Ronnie Lippett was over there. NFL 85 at halftime with all the scores and some interesting messages, I'm sure. Probably something from Ahmad and Axe that you'll enjoy checking out. 46 seconds remaining to be played in this first half. The Dolphins are leading it 10 to 3. <laughs> Dolphins with two timeouts remaining. The Patriots with three. And it is third down and one. Timeout. Marino went to the line of scrimmage. And there was something there he didn't like. Well, he didn't like the clock at the end of the field. The 20, the 30-second clock was down to three or four seconds, and he knew he didn't have time to get the, the uh, playoff, so he did the best thing. And rather than hurry up and have an offsides, possibly, or a misplay, just call timeout. A sellout here this afternoon as the folks have come from all over New England. Hope you're enjoying the action wherever you are. See this big crowd sitting in the mist here in Foxborough. Looks like winter is just about to set in here as we look at Raymond Berry. Played for his daddy at Paris, Texas, and then at SMU. And when he retired in 1967, he was the NFL's all-time pass receiver. A man who had only one fumble in his entire career. He believes in that silly putty, doesn't he? <laughs> Strengthen those hands with that silly putty. Exactly. And he's uh, he's had uh, a pretty good uh, year this year. They're five and three. He made some mistakes early on with uh, some of his running backs. He tried to change them around a little bit, play four of them instead of the two. And he says, I didn't like it. So he says, I'm changing it the following week. And uh, he admitted he had made a mistake. The other thing he was telling me earlier in the week was the quarterback position, judging when to, when to play Easton and when to, to play Grogan earlier on was a tough decision for him. He'd never been through it before. But he's, uh, Grogan's his quarterback now. Third down and one. Marino throws, and it is complete for the first down to Tony Nathan. Nathan now in his seventh season out of Alabama. His 42nd catch of the year, and Claiborne over there to knock him out of bounds, number 26, and the clock showing 41 seconds left to go in this first half. There's one man right there, Tony Nathan, who has really picked up the slack for the absence of Mark Duper. Duper, the all-pro receiver last year for the Dolphins, who's been out with a cracked tibia uh, and pulled a hamstring tendon uh, this past week. But Tony Nathan has caught more passes and has really picked up the, uh, picked up the slack. shotgun pressure he gets it away it's intercepted intercepted in the 35 yard line by rod mcswain mcswain the nickel back from clemson guy who has great speed pass intended for clayton playing man to man on clayton and marino sees single coverage he's done this a lot just throws it up and hopes Hopefully, Clayton will go up and make the play. That time, Clayton went to the outside as we see a good close-up matchup. Now, McSwain plays to the outside and then drifts to the inside. Poorly thrown ball, but there are only 23 seconds left or 35 seconds, so I'm sure Marino was thinking, if my man doesn't knock it down, we still got to go in halftime with the lead. They got McSwain from Atlanta. He was the number three choice for them. They got him for an eight, a real fine. Let's see what the Patriots can do. Grogan trying to get out of there. Now loses the football. And they get it back at the 27-yard line. It looked like Craig James fell on it. And we have 25 seconds remaining to be played in this first half. Timeout call. with 
with 13 fumbles lost. Tied with St. Louis in that rather unenviable category coming into today's game. And they, uh, they, those two teams lead the National Football League in most fumbles lost. But this is not an ideal uh, day for offensive football. It's cold and it's wet. And the more missed you get, the, uh, the wetter the players are going to become and the colder they're going to get. And it's very tough holding on to the football. You can see Raymond Berry. Uh, uh, he's not worried about how he looks. He just wants to stay warm. And I don't blame him calling that a sack the second of the day for Miami 21 seconds left to go in this first half there's Don, Don your looks, former head looks man good, doesn't he? uh, looks pretty good for a fellow 55 years old who's been through a very rugged season already it's the most disruptive camp he's ever had and uh, there's been a lot of problems but uh, talking to him earlier in the week uh, they're five and three and they play the next four games uh, against AFC East Company Competition and uh, it's right there in front of them. They have the Jets at home next week, and then uh, if they can go on and win the following two, uh, I think one's Buffalo and in Indianapolis. Uh, so it hasn't been all gravy, and it hasn't been the way he would like to have had it. But uh, the challenge is in front of them, and if there's anybody that can get his team motivated with all the injuries they've had, it's uh, Don Shula. We talked about that at the top of the show. Shula coached Ray Berry, 1963 through 67. Goes in motion. Grogan over the middle, and it is caught. And out of bounds goes Irving Fryer. Fryer went high into the air to get it, to pick up a 12 on the play. Moyer, the linebacker, was out there with him. You see Fryer coming in motion. Now he's just going to go across the field. He's uh, letting the other receivers go deep. This is a safe pass because it's a shorter pass to uh, Fryer. Now if he's got some speed or if there's an opening up the field, maybe he can break it for 30 or 40 yards. I don't anticipate them taking any big chances uh, in the backfield. Patriots have two timeouts remaining. 15 seconds left to go in this first half. Stephen Starring, and Starring couldn't get out of bounds. The clock is running. Six seconds left. They picked up eight yards in the first down, and they call the timeout. One timeout left for the Patriots in six seconds with which to operate before the half comes to a close. Grogan, who played at Kansas State, a fifth-round draft choice in 75 came into today's game with 141 touchdowns and 163 interceptions. Here are the timeouts remaining as Grogan talks things over along the sidelines. Three games ago against Buffalo, uh, when Tony Easton, who was there in the red jacket, by the way, with the headset on, was injured and Grogan had to come out and play, uh, Grogan came out and he fumbled the first snap. And talking with him, he said, uh, I think my knees were shaking worse than they ever shook in my life. Any time I've ever played professional football, and the reason was he wasn't prepared to play. And this is a very tough thing for a backup to do, uh, Jay. And that is to prepare like you're going to play and then for 18 games in a row, which he, he just sat on the bench and he didn't get in. So it's very tough. And this is what you have to look on the other sideline and see Don Strzok. He has to do this every week. And uh, it's very tough to do, especially for quarterbacks. Uh, they don't get in that much. Brogan has had a very checkered career here. He's been the toast of the town one day and down right at the bottom of the list the next day. And he's been very helpful with Tony Eason in that regard. First down with six seconds left in the first half. at that last play. It looked like a long ball to left field. Well, what you see, the three receivers on that side, the, the two receivers should go beyond the one that's going to play the ball. Now, the one that's going to play the ball should try and tip it toward the goal line. As you see there, Fryer and Morgan, yes. And Starring is the one that goes up, but the other two receivers are down further, like to try and tip it toward the goal line. 
in the turnover department. New England had three turnovers in this first half, and Miami had one. Miami got their touchdown from Davenport from four yards out, but it seems to me, Bob, the key play in that seven-play, 79-yard drive was this pass right here. Early on, uh, Marino going back. He's going to throw it to Clayton, and this is something that the Dolphin offense has not been able to do. They've been taking this away. New England has come out and is playing their style of defense. They're challenging them man-to-man uh, -man coverage, and they're letting them get behind them, so maybe we'll see a little bit more of Clayton behind the secondary. All right, and NFL 85 halftime activities will continue in just a moment. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Tonight, the 24th mission, where the lives of 10 men rest in the power of one. And now, the impossible is about to happen. Tonight, a special one-hour episode. Leif and Liver's what we're back! Amazing story. Three cheers for the cooks. He's going to have to see the Patriots throw the ball more successfully. Well, I think the Dolphins have done what they would like to do, and that is stop the running game uh, pretty well. Grogan now has got more pressure on him, the thing we talked about coming into the game, where he, he feels like the pressure was spread to the rest of the players on the team. But so, still, somebody has to make the play. He has a good offensive line and a lot of big players around him, but now somebody's got to be the catalyst to step in and make the play, and that's Steve Grogan. And I think Chuck Studley has done what he wants to do, and that is put more pressure on Grogan and take away that run and say, now go throw the football. Both of these clubs, as we mentioned way back in the beginning, five and three, a very interesting race going on in the AFC East these days. Well, the Jets are six and two, and I don't think the loser of this game is out of it by any stretch of the imagination, but don't tell that to any of these two coaches because they want to win this ball game. All right, we're getting set to go to the second half. And the kickoff by Franklin coming down for the Dolphins bringing it out across the 25 to the 30 to the 35 out to the 40 yard line and then a fumble. The Tupu got in there to pick up the ball, a 36 yard return. The ball is dead. It was returned by Lorenzo Hampton, so it will be the Miami club to take it at the 40-yard line as we look at these first-half statistics. Everything is uh, pretty much the same except for that number right there, the three turnovers by the Patriots, and that is really the thing that has changed this game around, the two interceptions at, uh, and the lost fumble, and uh, the Dolphins are ahead by seven. Hampton had been averaging 23 yards per return, and that one was a 36-yarder. Jensen comes in motion. The handoff goes to Davenport. And Davenport is up to the 44-yard line, stalled there by Kenneth Sims, 77, and Garen Barris, number 60. Barris is a rookie out of Stanford. Barris is playing very well. He needs more weight, but he is a good, aggressive, young defensive lineman, and they feel like he uh, may be as good as Ken Sims. Uh, he was taken in the second round, Sims in the first, but they like him. Second down, about seven, over the middle, the ball is tipped. He was trying to go to the tight end, Dan Johnson, number 87. And it might have been Barris who got a hand on it. It was a little tough to tell. Dan Marino, 10 of 17, 116 yards through the one interception. He's got Vigorito in there now, 32, at a wide receiver spot with Duriel Harris, 82. Again, Matt Moore did dress because of the rib injury, not playing. Tony Nathan, 22, is in the backfield. And penalty markers go down, and Marino got it away quickly as there was a lot of pressure from the Patriots. Sim, 77. Harris, 60. Tippett was offsides on the play. Andre Tippett, I think we've got it for you. Left side, 56, just jumps a little, a little early. Good uh, concentration on the part of Ronnie Lee not to move as he jumps across the line of scrimmage. Tippett had six and a half quarterback sacks coming into today's game. New England with six penalties, 29 yards. Miami, the least penalized team in the NFL, no penalties yet today. Tippett had 18 and a half sacks last year, 
to lead all linebackers in the league. So good at running, rushing the passer that they put him at a defensive end on third down. Third and one. And another penalty marker goes down. It looked like Varus, the rookie. Now, of course, he could have been pulled off, but he was in the Miami backfield before that ball was snapped. Encroachment, number 60, first down. First down, Varus firing across early. To the left of your screen, Varus goes in between the two linemen. That's the, that's the way the defensives charge on a short yardage situation into the gaps. He was taking his gap responsibility. He just did it a little bit too soon. Miami leading 10-3. Dolphins football at the Patriot 46-yard line. Jensen, number 11, is in that lineup now again for the Dolphins. Marino with play action, throws it away. Bob, was he trying to set up some kind of a screen to the left side there or just too much pressure? I couldn't tell, but he really had to get rid of it. Larry McGrew was coming in for the Patriots, number 50, the linebacker on the inside, and Marino shaking his head. Well, that was a trap pass, Jay. They wanted to try and get the ball to one, the back out of the backfield. They fake like it's a run, but there was good coverage on the play, and he didn't have time to look. Marino is having to throw for the most part to his primary receiver because he doesn't have time to look to his second and third receivers. Second down and ten. And again, it looks like the Patriots are offside. Marino may have a free play. And the pass going to Nathan bounced away from him. Sims number 77. Had a broken leg in 1983. Yep, he moved offsides against Kenneth Sims. It's interesting that in a period of a couple of minutes in this game, there have been three offsides penalties. The Dolphin cadence, Jay, I know it very well. Yes, you do. <laughs> and how it goes as we look at the pressure on Marino, but it's a non-rhythmatic cadence. And you don't have to say the first hut or the second hut right after the first, and it's confusing to the Patriots at this point. Second down and five, three penalties on three plays. Davenport, fumbles! for the New England Patriots do it again. Great coverage by our crew, directed today by Richard Klein and our producer Larry Cirillo. And this crown fired up. That's his first fumble recovery as a professional. And now on first down, Grogan with a screen. Out to James at the 35, at the 40. Just over the 40-yard line. A pickup of about six as Hugh Green, 55, made the play for Miami. 13 and a half minutes to go. We're in the third quarter. The Dolphins lead it 10 to 3. It's a good call by Grogan. He's been throwing a lot of play action on first down, and the linebackers have been getting deep. This time he showed pass, and they got deep, and he dunked the little screen pass out. Screens are good against zone coverages. They're not good against man-to-man, -man where the linebacker will go right to the receiver. James and Collins in the eye behind Grogan. The pitch to Collins. Collins spinning across the 45. And down at that point, Doug Betters, number 75, the eight-year man from Nevada, Reno, made the tackle. Betters, number six draft choice, 6'7", 265. And as you mentioned earlier on, Robert, he's been playing well. He's a leader of that defense. You know, with the uh, with A.J. Uh, Dewey out of the lineup and uh, uh, Baumauer uh, gone uh, for a while, they really need some leadership, and Betters is the one that has really come on to give them that leadership. On first down.
51 on the tackle, pickup of 12. Good blocking by Collins here, the lead man. Exactly. One of the best things about James Curring is that Collins is blocking for him. And Hannah, 73, coming through the hole, heads for Blackwood. Blackwood runs around the block. Hannah didn't have to block him. Blackwood ran around it, and that's just as good as, uh, as uh, getting Hannah, blocked. Hannah's a handful <laughs> when he's out there in front of you. Well, you, can, you can understand being uh, running out of his way. Some people say he's been playing hurt. Collins carries there, and Betters makes the tackle. Talking about Hannah, he's had a calf injury. He had the neck injury last year. Missed some games earlier on. The game is just inside the 40-yard line. We have 11 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, and the Dolphins lead 10-3. to Patriots trying to get back into this one. Sellout crowd at Sullivan Stadium and in Foxborough. Brogan goes long. He's got a man, Morgan. Overthrown just a little bit. Judson 49 and Brown 43. The free safety in the right corner were back there, but it looked like the intended receiver had a step. He did, Jay, and it was a uh, uh, an opportunity he could have completed. As you'll see, Morgan releases to the inside. Now he's going to go back. Now if the ball is thrown right now to the deep outside, he would have had a chance to at least come up with a play, but fairly good coverage on the play. And with the conditions being what they are today, wet and damp and a little chilly out there, you're not going to have precision throwing. Eric Grogan stats. Morgan had one of his greatest days against Miami. In November of 81, 182 yards on just five catches. From the shotgun. Grogan going downfield again and overthrowing Stephen Starring. Starring had a step on Judson. How about Rashad? NFL 85 update. All right, Jay, in Pittsburgh, third quarter action. This is the Steelers' go-ahead touchdown. Walter Abercrombie takes the handoff, goes off left tackle, 32 yards, touchdown. Pittsburgh takes the lead, 7-6. to six. All right, Ahmad, and uh, thanks, too, for your very insightful look at the underachievers in the National Football League, the New England club today on NFL 85, a very fine feature. Camarillo set to boot the ball. Tommy Vigorito is downfield. Angle to the far sideline. And to the coffin corner, and let's see. Is it a touchback or not? Yeah. It is. They had to wait to line it up. It was very, very close, as it looked for a minute like Camarillo might have put that ball out at about the one or two. 10.52 to play in the third quarter. The Dolphins lead 10-3. to A day in the country. That's something to look forward to. And so is Ford Tempo, the car that shows... Brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? with you. Marino, 10 out of 18. First down for the Dolphins from their 20-yard line. They lead 10 to 3, third quarter. Jensen goes in motion. Pitch comes back. And as they pitch the other way to Hampton, he gets to the 24-yard line. Steve Nelson, 57 on the tackle, pick up a four. There's Rod Russ, the defensive coordinator for the New England Patriots last year, a year ago this week, as a matter of fact, Jay, uh, he was fired after this uh, Dolphin game by uh, then coach uh, Ron Meyer. The first thing, and there's Don Shula, who, who calls the plays for the Dolphin offense. I'll get back to that story in just a second. All right, and it is second down and six. Across the 25 yard line, Tony Nathan. 
Steve Nelson, number 57, made the stop. Roland James, 38. I think that was the first carry of the afternoon for Nathan. It was. Getting back to Rod Rust, the first thing that Raymond Berry did was to go out and rehire Rod Rust as a defensive coordinator. Steve Nelson says he's a genius, and uh, he certainly has done a great job in getting this Patriot defense where it is today. Fans here cheering on this defense. Third down and two. Out of the shotgun. Marino throws, and it is complete. Pass to the far sideline to Nathan. Picked up four and a first down. Don Blackman, number 55, on the tackle. A couple of scores for you. Minnesota leading Detroit as Brown has scored from one yard out. And Tampa Bay and the Giants now are tied up 13-all. Bob, I'm reminded, certainly all of us who remember Nick Bonacani's great play, wish his son Mark the very best, a tragic accident in that football game uh, recently. The Citadel, and he's going to be operated on this week. Hand off to Hampton, nothing doing for him over the right side. You're right, Jay. You know, Nick played for these same Patriots for a while and then down with the Dolphins. Uh, seen a lot of his friends and a lot of the people up here uh, have asked about Nick and uh, wanted us to, re to remember uh, them to him and just say that uh, uh, he and his family and Terry and Mark are all in their thoughts and prayers and uh, just hope for the very best. Yeah, I know that everybody around the country is praying for that situation to turn out well. Second down. back against the grain. It's complete at midfield. Boy, Marino did a good job. Excellent job. 14-yard pickup. The pass to Clayton. Claiborne with the coverage. This is a designed rollout where Marino is going to come straight back and then take off. Watch the block of the back here as he sits outside and then seals everything else to the inside so that Marino can break containment. Woody Bennett, 34, blocks inside on the defensive end. Now Marino's outside, gives him more time to throw the football. And right there, you see the ability of this young man to throw the football with great power, sidestepping against the grain. At midfield, and the Dolphins only had 10 men on the field as Dan Johnson comes out there now. And Marino wants to put it up again. It is incomplete. At the 45-yard line, he was trying to get it to Jensen, the very versatile young man who played, of course, right in these parts at Boston College. Blackman, 55, looked like he might have tipped it. On the last 13 first down plays, Miami has gained a total of eight yards. They continue to have that problem on first down, picking up needed yardage to put them in a position to make the offense go. Jensen, you saw having trouble picking his way through there, but you're right, Jay, and what that causes is a lot of pressure on second and third downs. And it is second and ten. Tony Nathan, and he got about two. Garen Barris, number 60 on the tackle. We've talked about the Dolphin offensive line. Right here is Jeff Tate. He's going to block over the nose. Stevenson will block this way, and Foster will come over and block on a trap. Now watch the offensive line. And you'll see Sims come to meet 61 Foster and really does a pretty good job of stuffing the play. Rod McSwain, the nickelback, has come in there in a prevent defense on third down and eight. Houston leads Kansas City. Cincinnati defeating Buffalo in the third quarter. This is the eighth play of this drive on third and eight out of the shotgun. Marino's in that he cannot get outside then he's dead because from the right side the offense set back so he can try and run left what happened was he couldn't get outside and couldn't break containment good play by the Patriots Reggie Roby set the punt to Irving Fryer it's a beauty Fryer at the 13th oh a great block 
block to spring Pryor down the sideline. Pryor is out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Woody Bennett knocked him down. 48-yard punt, a 36-yard return. We're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that... Look at this punt return. Jim Bowman, number 28 for the Patriots, is going to get a great block on Robert Sowell to spring prior on this run right here. Bowman, the rookie, it's a great block. They have brought the ball back, saying he stepped out of bounds. He stepped out at the 34, so it was a 23-yard return. Hand off to... Tony Collins. Collins to the 38-yard line. And the tackle made by Mark Brown, number 51. Let me correct something I said a moment ago before I really get under the gun here. Jim Jensen went to school at Boston University, not <laughs> Boston College. I could get in real trouble around these There parts. is a difference up here. There is a difference, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Miami 10, New England 3. 20 to go in the third period. Craig James, fumble, and I think they're going to call it dead. They will. I think they're, oh, wait a minute. They're going to say that Miami has it. But the one official had called it dead. And now I think they indicate Miami football and a turnover against the Patriots here. Well, you see that statistic right there. The Patriots are very upset, as you can see. And they've spread it around, Jay. It hasn't been any, any one person, the quarterback losing the fumbles or the backs or the wide receivers. Take a look and see if we can see as Hannah, 73, comes around to block on Blackwood. Now, does the ball come? Yeah, he was... I don't, I don't believe he was down when that ball came out. I don't think he was either. It was pretty close call. And it will belong to Miami. Try to check and see who came up with the ball. A little tough to tell. Here's another view of it. Yes, it was out. It was he out was before he hit down. the ground. And Good it was call. Jackie Ship. Jackie Ship recovered the fumble. Another turnover, and Miami leading 10 to 3. Has it at the Patriot 49, and the Patriots got it by Steve Nelson gets it. Take a look here. Now watch the snap, and watch Stevenson. Now Stevenson is the center. He is going to step this way to try and make his block. In doing he moves his, his target area, and by that doing that, the quarterback doesn't get the ball in his hands, but he gets it off on his leg. The centers, a lot of time, are responsible for these quarterback center exchanges more than the quarterbacks are, and that was a, an example of the quarterback not getting the ball from the center. Steve Nelson got it back, and after two turnovers, Grogan throws. Brown, number 51, making a nice play in front of Irving Fryer. Grogan has been wanting to go to Fryer for most of his big plays today. Ahmad Rashad set in New York for an NFL 85 update. All right, Jay in Houston, third quarter action. Houston finishes off a 63-yard drive with this three-yard touchdown pass from Warren Moon to Chris Dressel. They lead 13-6. Brogan down the sideline, incomplete. Brogan trying to get it to number 83, Cedric Jones, but Brown, the free safety, had the coverage. But Brown on a good play, Jay. He's almost had uh, two interceptions in this game. He is coming over. He's got the deep outside, the bottom of your screen, makes a good play, and then Fryer actually, well, they they both break it up. I was going to say I thought Fryer turned defensive back and knocked it away, but I think the collision knocked it away. Bud Brown playing in there, a very quick, young defensive back, second year, 10th round draft choice. Was a surprise to make the ball club last year as Willie come on. On third down, Miami in 
to prevent defense. Grogan has time. He throws too high. Intended for Stephen Starring. Starring covered by William Judson. He had him open that time. And here's a battle between McNeil and Cedric Jones. Like a face mask, a little it's, head it's slap. Tit, <laughs> it's tit for tat. It's yes, tit sir. for tat. You hit me in the head, I hit you in the head. Now they're talking about it. <laughs> and now they're going to say, okay. Okay, you did a good job. Nice play. <laughs> Rich Camarillo, fifth-year veteran from Washington. Vigorito back to receive this punt. It's a dandy. Vigorito. Fifty-four is there to make the play. Fifty-two yard punt, thirteen yard return. More in a moment. Mount Hood, Oregon, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Mount Hood means the best. who fumbled the last time he had the ball. Picks up three. Tackle made by Roland James, number 38, the strong safety. Only touchdown of the day came in the opening drive, and it was Davenport who scored. Let's take a look at this uh, chart, this graphic. The Dolphins in 1984, the start of 84, only one player, Dwight Stevenson, is still there. Laxo, Kuchenberg retired. Injuries have taken some of them, but an entirely new offensive line for the Dolphins except for the center. Tony Nathan to the 25-yard line. Don Blackman, number 55, undercut him. You talk about injuries. Eric Laxo with a knee injury. Bob Baumhauer with a knee and ankle problem. Of course, Cooper's out. Had their hands full with injuries, with fellows who didn't show up in and camp. What, and what they've done, Jay, is they've used up all of their backups. Taves is playing very well. Foster is playing well. And Cleveland Green has played well. But the backups now are uh, a rookie uh, fourth-round draft choice, Jeff Dellenbach. Joe Ferguson just scored in that Minnesota-Detroit game. Minnesota leading at 13-10. to 10. Miami four out of nine on third-down conversions from the shotgun. Complete out at the 40 to the 44-yard line. Oh, a fine throw to Mark Clayton from Marino there and a pickup of 17 yards. Ronnie Lippett, 42 on the tackle. I'm sure that Marino and Clayton are happy to see some man-to-man -man coverage, unlike what they've been catching the last few weeks, deep zones. New England's playing some zone on first down, but on, on third down and passing situations, they play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, and it's giving Clayton and Marino an opportunity to beat uh, some man coverage. Clayton over the 100-yard mark for the seventh time this year. Two and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Dolphins lead it 10-3. to three. He got away from one of the Patriots, but he couldn't get away from the rest of them. Written out of bounds by Lester Williams, number 72. A loss of about three yards on the play. That was Williams. Big, big Garen Barris that was in there breaking up the play. Williams was on IR until a few weeks ago with a knee injury. Oh, Varis is a talented-looking raw youngster, isn't he? The rookie number 60 from Stanford. They say that Julie Adams is going to retire this year, and if he does, Garen Varis is the heir apparent for that position. Lester Williams was drafted four years ago, the same draft that produced Kenneth Sims and Andre Tippett. They got some pretty good defensive players in that one. Second down and 12. Over the middle. The tight end, number 87, Johnson makes another nice catch. And Roland James had the tackle. They get half a dozen on the play. Playing in a very misty situation here. Green Bay now leading Chicago. Jim Zorn has thrown a 55-yarder to Jesse Clark. Zorn surfacing with Green Bay, and they lead it 10-7. Here it is 10-3, Dolphins. Third down and seven at the 47-yard line for Miami. Marino going long, and it is incomplete, and there's a flag. Mark Clayton was down there with 
with Rod McSwain, number 23, the nickel back. Penalty marker thrown. Pass interference, number 23, first down. It goes against McSwain, sets up a first down for Miami, 38 yards they get on the penalty. There's a good close-up. This is, they're out there by themselves. This is something Clayton and Marino have not had the last few weeks. Little arm, the right arm, prevented him from getting back. You saw Clayton with the vision back to the ball, and McSwain did not see it, and prevented him with his right arm from coming in and having an opportunity to make the catch. That was a good call. Miami has the first down at the Patriots' 16-yard line. 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Lorenzo Hampton got maybe a yard. Good job by Blackman. Blackman, who went to school at Tulsa, number 55. A fourth-round draft choice in 81. Started the day with five sacks. Were mentioned early on that Blackman and Tippett, Nelson, McGrew are outstanding in the linebacking situation. Adams, Big Julius, number 85, is out of the game right now with a bruised leg. Second down, nine. And incomplete at the five-yard line. Dan Johnston, the intended receiver. Roland James had the coverage, number 38. Eight seconds left in the third quarter. The ball was thrown a little bit behind uh, Dan Johnson, and Marino shaking his head. He says, I know I didn't get it out in front of you because he had some running room, but it's continuing to miss, and it's, uh, it's very difficult conditions, Jay, because the officials can't keep the ball dry. The field is getting a little bit wet. Uh, from the rain and the mist, and it's uh, tough conditions for the offense. We've seen some turnovers, but nobody's taken advantage of them in this quarter. And our technician's doing a great job of giving you these pictures with a lot of mist on their lenses. They're doing as best they can. Marino over the middle, incomplete. That was the tenth play in the drive. Intended for Tony Nathan, Fred Marion, the free safety 31, who played at Miami. Had the coverage. Give credit to Rod Rust, the coordinator, and the defense for the Patriots because they stationed Marion right there in the middle of the field. They knew that in third down situations, the Dolphins like to go to Nathan, and they had him right there in the middle of the field. And uh, he was there, and Marino had to throw it low. It is going to be a 32-yard field goal attempt. Quad Reves, the rookie. Up and it is good. This young man has done a splendid job. He ran off on Shaman and Garcia. The end of the third quarter. 13 to 3, the Dolphins. And we'll be back right after these messages from your local station. Tonight, the mission where the lives of 10 men rests in the power of one. A special one-hour episode. Amazing story. Well, this big crowd watching the Dolphins and the Patriots, and the Dolphins up by 10. Stephen starring. Townsend, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. We start the fourth quarter in the mist here in Foxborough. And there's the way the scoring has gone. The only touchdown of the day, a four-yard romp by Davenport in the first quarter for Miami. You gotta give credit to Chuck Studley. A lot of criticism the last couple of weeks uh, going to Detroit and having Detroit score 31 points. Uh, Tampa Bay scoring 38. He has come up here and really shut down New England's offense. Well, and Don Shula's stood very strongly by Studley with all of the personnel problems. Pass going out to Collins. Collins is over the 30, 35, still going. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Glenn Blackwood and Jackie Ship knocked him out. A 21-yard gain. Watch the offensive line. As he set up the screen, 73 now is Hanna. You see him go off to the right along with Collins, 33, who gets the ball. 75 is Morris. Good play now. H Hog Hannaway, <laughs> Hog Hanna and Holloway, if they could run a little bit faster, he may have gained a little bit more yardage because they were blocked. 
They went that away, didn't they? <laughs> All right, first down. Longest game on first down today for the Patriots right there. And this one over the middle complete to James. that when Grogan gets in trouble, he's going to his backs. Collins on a screen on first down. He looks deep and dumps it off at the right time. Gives Collins and uh, James an opportunity to break a tackle. James says, I want the football more. I want to make some big plays, and he can do it. A lot of time, 14 minutes to play. We're in the fourth quarter. Dolphins leading 13 to 3. Whistle as James got the ball. And a flag is down. Referee Fred Wyatt, ball start. It's against John Hanna, number 73. Hanna, who is now in his 13th year. Raymond Berry. Worked with Frank Royals at Arkansas, with Dallas, Detroit. The Patriots was here with Chuck Fairbanks. And 11 years behind him as an NFL assistant. Miami had the ball 11. 43 in the third period and only came up with three points. They lead it 13 to 3. First and 15 and a big hole opens up for James. And he gets about seven or eight yards as Paul Lankford, number 44, the corner man, made the stop. The left side is two pro bowlers, Holloway and Hanna. Both get good blocks, although Holloway had his arm out, his left arm out, hooking Bo Camper a little bit. James saw the daylight to the outside and jumps to the outside, but those two pro bowlers on the left side, that's why you see a lot of running by New England to their left. Wouldn't you run behind those people, too? I'd stay behind them as much as I could. Second down and seven. Rogan down the far sideline, overthrows the intended receiver. Brzezinski, the veteran linebacker, was isolated out there one-on-one -on -one with him. He was, and he had good coverage. And Steve, that look on Grogan's face, he says, hey, it was supposed to work. We had that planned all week. It worked well in practice. But you got to give the credit to the Dolphin defense. They're playing very well and covering. That was a fake reverse. A lot of things for the defense to look at, but still they, they kept their uh, coverage. Patriots looking for their fourth straight victory. If they get it, they're going to have to come from behind. 12.48 to play. Third down and seven at the 34. Rogan rushed, gets it out there. It is complete. And it is Stefan starring, but he's a little short of the first down. Starring hit by Don McNeil, the extra defensive back for the Dolphins. And let's see what they do here on fourth down. adjustment route you can't fold him for not going far enough on third down on that play because he had to stop because the Dolphins were uh, in his face all right they had Withers on the field now he's come back out they'll take a time they're gonna take a timeout Tatupu is also out there and they're gonna talk things over with 1158 to play we'll take a timeout the Dolphins 13 the Patriots 3 when the going gets rough, you need a tough 4x4 like this. The 86 4 Fourth and one, they've got a tackle in the backfield. And here is a trick play, and it is a touchdown to Greg Hawthorne! Oh, the play on fourth down. And they're going wild at Buckstar.
be watching the Chicago Bears and Perry, William Perry, the Dolphins had to see it also and said they're going to use him to block. So they're going to run left. And they didn't. They pull a play action pass. We've got a ball game. Hawthorne's first reception with the Patriots back from waivers when Brock went down. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Coors and Coors Light, beers with a difference worth tasting. And by Alcoa, Aluminum Company of America, world leader in aluminum technology. right here comes up and grabs a hold of Robert Sowell now that was not caught but if but if um, Raymond Berry is using his offensive tackle in the backfield can a pass be not far behind it Mike Ditka is doing it with William Perry in Chicago and off for Miami Going to Nathan, and he gets a few up the middle. Tough going. Steve Nelson made the play. Uh, Perry caught a touchdown pass in that Chicago game today. The refrigerator yeah. he opens the doors for everything, doesn't he? <laughs> Steve Moore's probably on the sideline now talking to Raymond, saying, listen, I, I did my block, although Raymond doesn't know. It. He didn't do it very well. Now I want to catch a pass. 11-14 to play here. Dolphins leading by three. Second down. covers it. You know, Jay, Dwight Stevenson is so quick, and whenever you have a nose tackle on you that is quick, sometimes you snap the ball and stand up too quickly, and that has happened twice already in the second half to Marino and Dwight Stevenson. Detroit and Minnesota now tied up. The Giants have taken the lead over Tampa Bay, and Cincinnati leads Buffalo. 23 to 10. Third down and six. Marino over the middle. It is complete. Catch made by Clayton. First down at the 40-yard line. Rod McSwain, 23 on the tackle. They pick up nine. Clock running with 10.20 to play in this game. Mark Clayton is just eating McSwain alive. He's, he's catching deep passes. He's had interference. The bottom of your screen, watch him get to the inside of him. Fakes, then he goes inside, and you can complete this pass all day. It's a safe, easy, quick pass. You don't have to protect very long, and McSwain, McSwain or somebody has got to be able to stop Mark Clayton. The Patriots, you remember, took a timeout here in the second half. They have two remaining. And this one is... Oh! intercepted and there's a penalty marker thrown. Fred Marion almost picked it off and let's see what the call is as they were trying to get it to Clayton again. It's against the Patriots. Illegal contact, number 42, first down. Ronnie Lippett. Number 42, who played at Miami. They like to work on him. Here we see it again. This time, there's a jam right there. Past five yards, you can't touch him once they get past five yards downfield. That was not interference because the ball was not catchable, but early on, the official had to wait to throw the flag to see that it was going to be a pass, and that was the call. The Dolphins have a first down at the 45-yard line. 9.50 remaining in this game. Davenport trying to get outside, does. He's at the 50. Bangs his way out of bounds at 
the 48-yard line. Fred Marion, number 31, making the tackle. The Patriots this afternoon have been penalized on 11 occasions. The Dolphins have not had a penalty all day, and we've seen the second half penalties that the Patriots have had have really hurt them. But remember, in the first half, the big one when they had a touchdown called back because of illegal motion. Second down and two. Jensen comes in motion. Nathan. First down at the 44-yard line. Steve Nelson, the tackle, the inside linebacker. Top tackler, number 57. One of the very best. What a great player Steve Nelson is. Maybe not your quickest, but certainly one of the smartest. Redskins really rolling, and the Giants now leading Tampa Bay 19-13. Schubert with a 41-yard field goal. Miami trying to hold on to this football, Bob, and eat up some clock some points on the board as well. That's Nathan. Nathan to the 41-yard line, about three. Tackle made by Don Blackman, 55, and we have 8.50 remaining to be played, and the Dolphins have a 13-10 advantage. Next week, New England will play the Seahawks at Seattle at 4 Eastern time. Miami meeting the Jets at Miami at 4 Eastern. The ball is going to be coming from the inside, and so it gives Clayton the first shot at it. He has got it, and then drops it. There's a great angle coming right at you. The ball is caught, and then slips out. Third down. Excuse me, Jay. The Dolphins can't complain about deep coverage today. They've had plenty of opportunities. They must have cut the wrong way. There was a miscommunication here someplace. Let's take a look here. Vigorito's on the inside. He has to fight the jam. Now he's coming to the inside. And a miscommunication between Marino and Vigorito. And Lippert should have had the play. There are drills the defensive backs do. And he should have had that. He could have possibly gone all the way for a touchdown. Roby to do the punting. They do. Or more. I remember the snowplow game. We were here. I uh, wonder where Mr. Henderson is these days. <laughs> you think they don't remember that in Miami, too? They oh, do. Oh, boy. Rogan on first down. A lot of time. Runs out of there at the 25, the 30. And he's got a first down. He paid for it. He picked up 12 yards. William Judson, number 49, on the tackle. Steve's from the old school now. He hasn't learned to slide. He still dives in. Everybody's covered in the secondary. Good pass protection. There's a new rule in the league this year that if a quarterback goes downfield and slides, gives himself up, then he can't be hit. Steve's got to read the rule book. Be a lot safer. <laughs> Seven and a half to play. yard line. Blackwood, number 47, and ship 50 on the stop. Mentioned that New England's next road game will be at Seattle for Eastern time, two weeks from today. Next week, they have the Colts here, and that's a one o'clock Eastern time start. And next week, 
Miami goes against the Jets. The Jets at Indianapolis later on today, of course. Right now, second down and six. A, a, a missed bar, a missed the communication in the secondary. There's nobody around him. Ship to the inside is the closest one. Brzezinski comes in from the outside and misses another tackle. Good play by the Patriots, and Grogan has got him nibbling away, moving down the field. Collins had 109 yards on six catches last Sunday. Now it's Weathers in there along with the Tupu. Brown and Ship are blocked. Linebackers have to be more aggressive in meeting the guards as the play comes right at them, Jay. Pick up of 12. Glenn Blackwood made the tackle. 5.25 to play. First down at the 36. Tony Collins at the 30. And another first down. gets blocked, and Brzezinski is blocked to the inside by Ramsey. Bud Brown over to knock him out. But so many times, Jay, I've been involved in this series, and, and Grogan will not have had a good half. As I said in the first half, his completion percentage is not what is important. It's how he brings him back, and he's doing it right here. First down at the 23-yard line. Penalty markers are down. Greg James way to the 13-yard line. Hugh Green, 55 on the tackle. Now a penalty marker goes down. There was some extracurricular activity at the five-yard line. And we'll wait till they unravel this one. Fryer, the wide receiver, got inside and made an excellent block. As we see, it's against the Dolphins on the safety. And there may have been some follow-up due to that uh, good block that he made. Wyatt. Offside, defense, decline, first down. 98 yards for James today. He hasn't had a 100-yard game this season as Don Shula looks on. He had 98 against the Packers back in September. 96 yards on 15 carries last week. So it is first down at the 13. the first penalty for Miami. Pitch back coming to James. Nothing there for him. Doug Betters doing the job. Pick number 75. Matt Barr has kicked the 30-yard field goal. Cleveland has the lead. Bill Kenny to Stefan Page, and they're tied at 20 in the fourth quarter. Another field goal for Schubert. He's kicked four. 13 all there. Detroit and Minnesota. Cincinnati leading Buffalo in the fourth quarter. 99 yards on the day for James. Second down and nine. Frank James down to the two. Tatupu, wait a minute. Was it Tatupu? It was. Mostly Tatupu broke through. A big guy from USC. Watch the linebacker right here as Hannah comes straight out and makes a block on him. And you 
see a gaping hole in the middle of the Dolphin defense. Right there, head on, hog Hanna on the linebacker as the Tupu runs right past him into the secondary, and you're in trouble when your safeties make the first contact. Brogan asking for quiet. Withers and Tupu. Mosey Tupu comes up short. Near the one-yard line. Brown and Ship and Betters are all there right there. Mosey's Mooses. <laughs> Some of Tatupu's fans. Mosey is a very popular player on this team with the fans. In fact, you saw his fan club. Very valuable player on the special teams. Some people think he should be playing a little bit more on the regular situation. Patriots have done the job on the ground. 3.15 to play. Dolphins 13, Patriots 10. Second down, goal to go. Grogan rolling. They knew he could run the ball, but you saw Brzezinski was back covering the receiver. As we get the completion of the uh, extra point, if he would have come up to make the tackle on Grogan, he would have just dumped it over his head. Three minutes to play, and the Patriots have the lead. Bigger engines were easy on oil, but today's smaller, higher revving engines are tougher. They can break down an oil's viscosity within 15. Steve Grogan have captured the lead, and we remind you to stay tuned, because coming up, many of you will see the Raiders at Seattle, the Jets at Indianapolis, or Denver at San Diego. Check your local listings. A doubleheader day for you, and boy, has this been exciting. That's Hampton coming out at the 10. Reverse. And they give it off to Carter. Carter, and penalty marker goes down. Carter got it to the 22-yard line. number 27 on the tackle and now we'll see what Fred Wyatt can tell us about this play illegal block in the back number 53 the call goes against Jay Brophy the linebacker on the sideline he's uh, reborn you might say earlier in the season when Easton was going very poorly he thought maybe that Barry would put him in the game and he said when he didn't put me in then he said I didn't think I would ever play this year but he's the quarterback now and he's doing a great job for him Dan Marino can he make some magic 253 remaining Marino steps up and throws and into the hands of Mark Clayton. It was underthrown. Marino has been held touchdownless only three times during his short career. Versus New England, versus Houston and the Jets. Once last year and twice this year, and how many times can you expect Dan Marino to bring you back? Second and ten from the 12-yard line. Over the middle, almost intercepted. Intended for Joe Rose, and Fred Marion almost had a touchdown there. If he could have held on, he could have just walked in. right here as Rose comes across the field. Marino will not see him, and he'll step in front of it. And you're right, Jay, if he could have picked it off, it would have been six points. As you see Marion sneaking around, sees it coming. Good 
play by Marion. And now third down and ten. And the Dolphins between a rock and a hard place. Long throw downfield, intercepted. Rob McSwain, now they say it's incomplete. But McSwain held to the ball, but he didn't. Trying to go to Clayton again. this time but this is a frustration throw marino tries to get it in one more time clayton doing his very best this time mcswain does the best job that time he just dropped it well jim bowman seemed to knock that ball away from him he had it here's the punt Pryor is downfield fair catch called for at the 36 yard line so we've got 227 left to play. That was a 52-yard punt. The Dolphins are down 17 to 13. And coming up next, don't forget, many of you see the Raiders in Seattle or the Jets in Indianapolis or Denver at San Diego. A doubleheader day for you here on NBC. And this has been a wonderful way to kick it off. It's not over yet. You know, Jay, the play that turned this whole game around, the Dolphins were dominating, the crowd was dead, New England's offense was dead. Fourth and two on the Dolphin around the 30-yard line. They called timeout. Raymond Berry goes up for uh, fourth for a first down on fourth and two with a with a big play. And they said earlier in the season he was too conservative. That is what turned this ball game around. That was the touchdown pass to Hawthorne. Here's James. James over 100 yards today. 18 carries now for about 108 yards. Rudzinski 59. Ship 50 on the tackle. There's the rushing yardage and James with a big portion of that for the Patriots near the 110 yard mark. Timeout with 216 remaining to be played in this game. You know, talking about Raymond Berry, I was talking to him the other day and I asked him about his defense and he says, says, I don't really know anything about the defense. You'll have to talk to Rod Rust. I said, well, what about the offense? He says, well, I've let Steve Grogan call the plays now. He's doing what I wanted to do, but only better. He says, my philosophy is a good mixture of run and pass. And he said, at the end of the game, I want no bullets left in the chamber. And that's a great philosophy. Go out and give it your best. And if it's not good enough, at least you fired all your rounds. NFL League rules require we present away games starting with the opening kickoff and that of course to the stations in the team's home area so you viewers in Denver will be leaving this game in just a few moments for a telecast involving your home team and of course we'll continue to bring you reports on this game and keep you right up to date Don Shula the Dolphins head man his team down 17 to 13 with just 216 remaining it's the first Patriot 100 yard game of 85 and it goes to Craig James who had come so close before this season on two occasions he'd had 96 yards last week 98 yards against the Packers officially now he has 108 yards on 18 carries and as we talked very early on, he wanted the football. The young man from SMU, he said, give me the football, we'll get it done. A couple weeks ago, he went in and talked to uh, Raymond Berry and says, I want to carry the ball 20 or 30 times a game. He's not getting the 30, but he's getting the ball running and receiving at least 20 times, and he's producing. Second down and the long four. The Patriots leading 17 to 13. was Craig James tacking on to his big total today as Ship made the tackle at the 45-yard line. First final of the day, Minnesota. Bud Grant's bunch defeats Detroit 16-13. to The two-minute warning here, and they are a happy bunch in Foxborough. We'll be back with more in a moment. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes. 1984, one second left, and the Bengals trail the Browns by seven. As Boomer Esiason takes the snap, he fakes Rod and moves right. What's this? It's the old tackle-eligible pass to the 280-pound Anthony Munoz. In overtime moments later, out of the mud of Municipal Stadium, Jim Breach boots a perfect 36-yard field goal to sink the Browns 20 to 17. Glad we could get together. 
Oh, but we better hurry. We can't miss the concert. Right. Oh, no. The Patriots, over the past two seasons, 8-13 in games decided by seven points or less. And these Patriots showed patience and then resiliency as they came back to win this one this afternoon. If, in fact, they do win it, we still have two minutes to play. We talked about it in the opening, Jay, with Steve Grogan, how he has come back, and after not playing for 18 games, he has become more patient, and he feels like he has a team around him and certainly he did not play well in the first half as he threw three interceptions as we see the scores here three interceptions in the first half has come back and has thrown the bell ball well enough but he's called the right plays at the right time he has moved his plays around players around and has gotten his team back on top patriots would like very much to get the first down and keep the ball here third down and one pitch coming to James and he doesn't get it a big play over there by Mark Brown number 51 the right inside linebacker and let's go to Bob Costas right now for an update to NFL 85 Jay, the Browns' agony in Pittsburgh continues. 11 seconds remaining. Gary Anderson hits from 25 yards out. Pittsburgh pulls the game out 10 to 9. Last year in Pittsburgh, Anderson kicked a field goal with five seconds left to beat the Browns. And Bob Costas, Samad Rashad, and all the crew will be keeping you up to date throughout the afternoon. As, of course, this is a doubleheader day for us at NBC. NFL action will be continuing. Shows 145 remaining down on the sideline now. Don Shula in a conversation with one of the officials. There's Marino talking things over with his head man. They still have a life. They sure do. And what better man to try it than Dan Marino? And you know, he is really doing it with, with, with only half of his weapons. By that, I mean Mark Duper is not playing. Nat Moore, the fine wide receiver, the veteran who has come on and, and taken up a lot of slack for Duper, uh, has, has been a role player when Duper was in there, is not playing. So Marino really only has Mark Clayton and, and Tony Nathan. And he's had to go to Clayton when he's needed the big play, and that's no secret to the Patriots. That's exactly right, but still they've covered him much the way they they uh, uh, did with man-to-man -man coverage one-on-one -on -one, haven't double covered him a whole lot but uh, Marino has tried to go to him but he needs to go to his tight ends too I think this next series his tight ends may be open Rich Camarillo to punt to Vigarito Vigarito returned one for 23 yards oh a high pass he got it away wobbly kick Vigarito lets it go remaining a 31 yard punt by Camarillo Ed Williams was downfield for the Patriots back out on the field number 13 Danny Marino one timeout minute 42 seconds most NFL teams work on the two minute drill two or three times a week Marino has been very successful in the past, but again, how many times can you ask him to bring him back? Very few people have left this stadium. They want to see this one to conclusion. Marino throwing and incomplete at the 33-yard line. Rod McSwain had the coverage against Mark Clayton. Clayton had actually caught the pass, and McSwain knocked it out of his hands. As again, we see the same coverage, man-to-man -man coverage, with some help deep. Clayton jumps to get the football, and McSwain stays with it and knocks it loose. McSwain has been around that ball today, the nickelback. <laughs> he certainly has. Good and bad.
time to throw, steps up in the pocket. Now Clayton just comes back for the football. I think he juggles it. The ball is up in the air, and James, right there, close by, makes the interception. A big play for Roland James. And McSwain looked like he might have had a little bit to do with it with the hit in the back there. Tight coverage. Clayton could hold on to it. But that's the problem when you lose a Mark Duper and a Nat Moore. He has to go to Clayton. a five. Boyer 54. Little 99 on the tackle. Last time out for Miami. We'll be back in just a moment. I bought the Volkswagen Golf for its German engineered handling and performance. That's funny. I bought the Golf for its durability. James keeps tacking on to his big day. Picked up four. Shula, the giveaway takeaway situation from a year ago, a problem for the Dolphins. The 16 uh, differential went from plus 11 last year to minus 5, and he has said you just can't win playing football like that. There's Billy Sullivan. Of course, there's a lot of talk about the sale of this team. But he's got to be a very happy man this afternoon. There he is, Billy. Yes, indeedy. Big day. Patriots have had a big day on the ground. They control this football today. One of the keys for them. Craig James again. James now over 120 yards. Stop made by Mark Brown. Cincinnati defeats Buffalo. Washington romps over Atlanta. And this one is over here. We have 18 seconds left on the clock. But what a very big win for these Patriots. victory for the Patriots. The final again, Pat 17, Dolphins 13. We'll be back to talk.